Morning on ABC7. Good morning, El Paso weekend. El Paso's International Museum of Art is in danger of closing. How organizers are hoping to save it. Yet another big retail store is hit by a data breach. We'll let you know how this affects you. And UTEP's homecoming festivities wrap up tonight with a big game. The Miners take on Old Dominion at the Sun Bowl. And in storm track weather, Dan. Nice and cool temperatures in store for our Saturday as a cold front moved in overnight. How cool will we get? Your details ahead. As you need to start your Saturday, October 11th, the 2014 ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend starts now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Josie Ortegon. Well, it's a beautiful start to the morning. And Dan, finally feeling a little more fall-like. Yeah, totally feeling that way outside right now. Let's get right over to your ABC7 Storm Track WeatherNet sites and show you what I'm talking about. 54 degrees right now at Nolan Richardson with 56 degrees over at the Greater El Paso Landfill by Clint. KVIA, we're at 58 degrees. So notice we're in the 50s, some areas in the lower 50s this morning. So we are going to be cool and clear today, all thanks to the cool front that we saw push in today. However, we are going to warm up tomorrow, but then Monday will be cooling down again as another cold front makes its way through the area, and we'll get into more details on that. But as far as your day planner forecast is concerned, things look great for the day. Temperatures are going to be in the 70s. Notice by noon, 72 degrees and 76, both by 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock this afternoon into the evening. Now, you don't want to miss the entire forecast because we're going to be talking about winds, unfortunately, back in the forecast. I'll give you all those details coming up in about 10 minutes or so. Josie, back to you. Thanks, Dan. And we have a traffic alert that's going to affect a lot of you this weekend. Starting tomorrow morning, a section of I-10 between downtown El Paso and the UTEP campus will be completely closed. The Andal Bridge that goes over the freeway is set to be removed, and crews will install a concrete barrier over the new Spur 1966 bridge. Eastbound drivers will have to exit at Selen Park and take Paisano, and they won't be allowed back on to I-10 until they reach the U.S. 54 ramp. Meanwhile, westbound drivers will have to exit at Porfirio Diaz and will be able to re-enter I-10 at Schuster. And once again, this will be in effect between tomorrow morning beginning at 5 a.m. and last, and it will last until Monday morning at 5 a.m. And due to that complete closure of I-10, several Sun Metro bus routes will face detours on the road. Routes 18, 42, 59, and 83. And those that ride routes 10, 14, and 15, you can expect major delays. Those that travel in and out of central and downtown El Paso will run into traffic congestion on the road. So if you are planning on taking the bus tomorrow or just traveling around that area, just give yourself some extra time to get to where you need to go. Again, this will be in effect beginning tomorrow morning, morning until 5 a.m. Monday morning. And you, of course, you can find more information on the detours online at kvia.com. Federal authorities say one of New Mexico's most wanted violent fugitives is behind bars. A U.S. Marshals Task Force arrested 27-year-old Angelo Deshaun and Burdix in northwest Albuquerque on Thursday. State authorities issued a warrant for his arrest on July 1st. He was accused of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, aggravated battery, aggravated assault on a household member, and felon in possession of a firearm. Now, Burdix was arrested last year by the U.S. Marshals Task Force, but he fled from authorities. Federal authorities began investigating his case last month, and a picture of him went on billboards around the state of New Mexico. And they received dozens of tips from the public with sightings of Burdix. Garrison Commander Colonel Thomas Munsey has been removed pending an investigation. The top commander has been removed pending an investigation. Co Colonel Munsey is accused of misconduct, though a post spokesman said it is their policy not to comment on pending investigations. There's no information on who is conducting the investigation I either. Colonel Munsey oversaw all of Fort Bliss's facilities and services. He's been in El Paso since June. We're learning more about who may be investigating the probation department following serious allegations by an employee union. This all stems from a deadly crash last weekend. A man driving with his former probation officer in the car, even though policy states they should not have been together, Police charged 25-year-old David Savala with intoxicated manslaughter. The former probation officer in his car, 43-year-old Cynthia Mendoza, died Tuesday night from her injuries. 
The employees union alleges Mendoza advocated in court for Zavala to be released from his parole early, even though she had already been removed from his case because of their relationship. Now the employees union has shifted its attention on the probation director, Maggie Morales Aina. They want to know why she allowed Mendoza to act as Zavala's probation officer during the court hearing. The union says the probation director knew about the relationship months before the hearing in February. The probation director, Mendoza's boss, is appointed by the Council of Judges. ABC7 learned the same committee of judges who appointed her is going to look into will it, it into the union's allegations or if it will refer the case to the sheriff's office. Judge Sam Andrano tells ABC7 he is going to discuss it with his fellow judges and will make a decision in the next two weeks. Turning now to the latest on the efforts to contain and prevent the Ebola virus. Emergency rooms around the United States are making sure they're ready for any Ebola patients or just people who think they have the virus. Here's Rosa Foles with more. Hospitals around the country are preparing for Ebola patients. So what are hospitals ready to do and what can patients expect? Let me show you. At Mount Sinai. All a patient would have to do is walk in and say, I have a fever. And Dr. Shear from Mount Sinai tells us that that begins the entire process. Right. So, so at that point, the staff member would go through a series of questions in our algorithm. Some of the questions are basic and on signs that just went up on the wall, like, did you travel internationally? And do you have symptoms like cough, vomiting, or diarrhea? Security would keep the hallway secure from any other patients and staff so that we could move you, the patient, safely down the hallway to where we've identified a secure space. So no touching anything, no, no touching anything. talking to anyone. Right. And given a different clinical scenario, you could be in a wheelchair, you could be in a stretcher, and if need be, Depending we would Depending on the conditions of the patient. Right. And then we would, if that was the, if that was the case, we'd also then have done a bit more suiting up with personal protective equipment. Here is some of that protective gear. Gloves, plastic gowns, face shields. And a surgical mask you'd wear under that as well. And that's protecting your face, your eyes, your mouth, your nose, All any of those mu mucous membranes. There. All the gear is impermeable, meaning fluids can't pass through. Once the patient is inside the isolation room, that's it. There is no contact with anyone while doctors huddle outside and figure out next steps. What kind of care you needed, blood to be drawn, and also escalating it to hospital leadership and for the infectious disease department to notify the, um, the Department of Health. And most of the care that's involved in treating these patients is supportive care because as we know, there's no real proven therapy specifically for Ebola at this time. Good hydration, prevention of other infections, diagnosing other infections that may be going on, all that can be done here. Hospitals around the country have isolation rooms like these ready for possible Ebola patients, but they're hoping they don't have to use them. Rosa Flores, CNN, New York. Kmart becomes the latest retailer to be hit by data theft. The retail giant revealed yesterday that its payment system has been compromised by malware since early September. A company spokesperson says customers who used credit and debit cards while shopping inside stores were impacted, but wouldn't say how many customers. People shopping online were not targeted. The company says the hackers did not get access to people's PIN numbers. And here in El Paso, the town will be painted in orange and blue today because it's UTEP's homecoming. UTEP is celebrating its 100th birthday. And what better way to celebrate than inviting those who know UTEP best, Golden Grads. Our ABC7's Darren Hunt spoke to several minor alums, including 84-year-old Jerry Laird Porter, who graduated in 1951 and talked about secret crush, crushes that she had on football players. And this woman here, a 1964 graduate who still wears her freshman beanie 50 years later. And he also spoke to Raul Garibay, who says the university looks very different. I mean, it's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. People don't, don't know in the city of El Paso and in the state of Texas and in southern New Mexico the treasure, the treasure that exists here in this university. That's awesome. That's a yeah. note to add on. That was great. Okay. Homecoming festivities wrap up today. The parade begins at 1 this afternoon, followed by a pep rally. The Miners take on Old Dominion tonight. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. And if you can't go to the game or you want to watch it again, you can tune in at 10 p.m. to the El Paso Las Cruces CW. We'll be replaying the game tonight. And of course, for a full, full, complete list of homecoming events, you can visit our website at kvia.com. 
Republicans say it's supposed to prevent a voter fraud. Democrats say the GOP is just trying to keep minorities away from the polls. This is the new voter ID law in Texas. Thursday, a federal judge blocked the state from enforcing new voter ID requirements. The timing could spare an estimated 13.6 million registered Texas voters from needing one of seven kinds of photo IDs to cast a ballot. And that will be the topic of tomorrow night's ABC7 Extra. The election administrators for the El Paso Republican and Democrat Party will be in our studio and we'll be taking your calls and emails. Again, that's tomorrow night on ABC7 Extra at 10.35. And still ahead on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend, a dramatic water rescue in Arizona following severe weather. We'll have a look at that video coming up. Plus, after the enterovirus took the life of a young boy, his parents start a foundation in his honor. We'll have those details coming up. Time now is 8.10. Let's take a live look outside, courtesy of our TxDOT traffic cameras. We're taking a look at I-10 and East Lake. A little congestion. They're just light congestion for a Saturday morning, but if you are headed out and about, you should be should be good. All right, and moving on to storm track weather now with Dan Martinez. Dan. Well, your temperatures won't be a problem for today and tomorrow, same thing. But what about the work week? We'll get into all that coming up in storm track weather. You're watching ABC 7 where news comes first. You're watching ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend with Josie Ortegon and storm track weather with Dan Martinez.